Welcome to this new tutorial about creating breakdown scenes. In this tutorial, we'll show you how to display behind the scenes details and post production layers, just as you can see in this video. As you can see in the image, we need transparent and properly separated layers of the scene to apply this technique. All right, I've already prepared the layers in advance, so let's start by importing them into After Effects. Now we'll create a new composition and place the layers inside it in the correct order. We'll do some basic setup, like adjusting the layer modes and making sure the background layer is in the correct position if needed. Then we'll pre-compose each layer individually using the shortcut Control shift c Now we'll create a new null layer and name it Control. We'll add a slider control effect to it, which we'll use to control the depth movement of the layers. Now I select all my main layers and enable 3D mode for them. Then I press the P key on the keyboard to show only their position properties. Next, I right click on the position of each layer and choose separate dimensions, since we only need the Z axis. Now we switch to the custom view one so we can better monitor the position changes of our layers. Now we're going to add an expression to the Z position. To do that, hold down the Alt key and click on the stopwatch icon next to the Z position. We select the control layer and inside the expression, we multiply the slider control value by a number. In this case, I'm multiplying it by zero because I don't want the background layer to move forward. Now I copy this code into the Z position of the other layers. The next layer also stays at zero because it complements the background video. Then I start decreasing the number one by one, starting from minus one, and I continue this step for all the remaining layers. Now we can see the result. By increasing or decreasing the slider value, the layers smoothly spread apart or come back together in depth. Next, let's animate this effect. At second two, we set a keyframe with the value at zero. Then at second three, we raise the value to 400. Finally, we apply easy ease to both keyframes to make the motion smoother. Here we need to stop or cut all the videos before the animation and keyframes begin. Like this background, I'm cutting it at this time to prevent any interference during the forward movement of the layers. And I'm showing a still image instead of the video. To create the grid layout, we add a new solid layer. For the side grid, the solid's width needs to match the Z position of the last layer in this case, that's 2000. After creating the solid, we activate its 3D mode and apply the grid effect, then adjust the thickness and size of the grid lines as desired. Now I align the edge of the grid layer with the background layer and enable snapping to easily move the anchor point to the end of the layer. Then I use the rotation tool to rotate the grid layer by 90 degrees. Now to create the bottom grid layer, I add a new solid and set its height to 2000. I turn on 3D mode and copy the same grid effect onto this new layer. Then I align its bottom edge with the bottom of the background layer and move the anchor point there as well. Finally, I rotate the layer along the X axis to place it flat on the ground. 
Now we need to animate the grid layers so they appear in sync with the forward movement of the main layers. To do that, I apply the linear wipe effect to each grid layer. Then I animate the transition completion parameter based on the same timing as the slider keyframes and apply easy ease for smoother motion. We apply the linear wipe effect to the floor grid layer with the same keyframe timing. To adjust the direction of the reveal, we set the wipe angle to 180 degrees. To create a white line around each frame, I select the layers and double click the rectangle tool, then apply the stroke effect to the layer and adjust the line thickness. I return to the main view and create a new camera. I reveal its position and point of interest using the P and A keys and set keyframes for them at the right time before expanding the layers. In the end, I just take the first keyframes, copy and paste them at the end, so the camera goes back to where it started. Then I ease them to make everything look smoother. I also bring back the slider keyframes and the grid layers so everything goes back to the way it was at the start. I also add the background video layer at the end of the process. And that's it. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you enjoyed the process and learned something new. If you liked this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more. See you next time.